151. Okay. Yeah. Is it like a B flat? Yeah. yeah okay. My name is Maddie Alrich, and I'm the costume designer for. I am my name's the Annie Saunders, designer. and I I'm am Brown creating I'm the, the wreck with and my I'm team. Julia Nyman, and I am the set designer and costume designer. I'm actually a visual artist in a performing arts. I'm Kate Fry, format. and I'm the sonographer. My name is Missy Mazzoli, and I'm the composer. I'm of Royce Fabric, and I am the librettist really for the opera Proving Up. And I really just love the high art quality of it. It's really great. The capacity for invention. I'll be designing the costumes and the space. The when you're dealing with a living in composer and all these living the collaborators, no wonder opera is viewed as this art form where everything meets. So that is the end game, yes. essentially, yeah. to, you know, sing on the Met stage with a bunch of people watching you and winning some money. In the following interview, I talked to Shabrell Williams a few weeks back about her experience at the Metropolitan Opera National Council auditions and the fact that she won her district of Philadelphia, which is really exciting. I also learned more about Shabrell's operatic craft. So there are 41 districts in the whole U.S. Um, each one is a city or represents a city or a state. Mm -hmm. And it starts there with districts, and they happen at different times, sometime before February, I would say, maybe yeah. even January. Um, and depending on who won those districts, then they go to the regionals. Mm -hmm. So it's broken up into districts and then regionals, so like regions of the U.S. as opposed to like cities. And then after the regionals is uh, when all of the winners from the regionals go to New York for the semifinal. So the, the grand finals usually, I would say there can be five to ten winners okay. for the grand finals. So that's each person maybe getting like fifteen to ten to fifteen thousand dollars at the end of it. Um, and singing on the Met stage with orchestra. Yeah. So that is the end game yes. essentially yeah. to, you know, sing on the Met stage with a bunch of people watching you and winning some money. Is the first step sort of the hardest part? Because as it gets narrowed down, then... it can be. Yeah. Um, so the districts advancing to the dis uh, advancing from the districts really depends on again the singers that you're singing with, mm -hmm. and then the judges. Um, so you know there are some people that think that if they start in a smaller district, mm -hmm. so like somewhere where there aren't like really good schools around, that maybe it'll be easier for them to advance, but. Yeah. It's kind of just it's luck of the draw. Luck of the draw. Extent. And yeah. I mean, sometimes that does work. So like maybe there aren't that many good people, quote unquote, yeah. singing in that district because it's so small and nothing is around. Um, so maybe you are like the best of the pack that day. Yeah. But the regionals, depending on how many districts are in a regional, that was probably a poor choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Because like people probably wouldn't usually uh, audition choose to audition in a Philadelphia or DC or New York district because yeah. of Juilliard, yes. all of the young artist programs around that area, all of the art, yeah. all of the schools around that area. But Yeah, so how many people were in the mix for specifically the Philadelphia one? Um, there were 36 participants 36. Okay. out of 40. So yeah. usually the cap was forty. Okay, gotcha. So so, we, so if they if they cap at forty, is that like they you have to go through a pre process before even being approved to you have go to audition. apply? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And I think usually so it's a first cur uh, first serve first first come first serve basis mm -hmm. for this application. So they have forty slots, and they had a deadline for the application, mm -hmm. um, but they also have a cap. So if you if the if the deadline is like November seventeenth and you're sending your application November sixteenth, there probably isn't space left yeah. unless people really just did not apply for that district that year. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and you chose Philadelphia because it was where you were from. Like, yeah, yeah. So I've never actually done anything operatic in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I went to the high school for creative and performing arts and did like some small stuff at like settlement music school, but mm -hmm. that was just one thing. It wasn't really anything of note, like, yeah, I don't know. So I decided uh, that, I, I don't know, I wanted to go back home and sing. Yeah. Even if it would have been hard yeah. no, <laughs> to it's advance. Really cool. so. Yeah. And that meant that, like, did your family get to go, did they, could they watch, or was it? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So okay. the cool thing about these auditions is that it's open to the public. Yeah. Oh, nice. All the districts, all the regionals, open to the public in that region. Yeah. And people can come from out of town, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, my mom came. My best friend came. Um, the blind artist that my best friend works for sometimes came. Mm -hmm. uh, another friend from high, high school came. 
and then my mom invited some of her uh, a couple of her coworkers that liked opera mm-hmm. and yeah right. so it was like I had a nice little group yeah little cheering section yeah are you allowed to cheer at opera things I uh, it actually <laughs> depends on the district so this one was interesting in that they allowed the audience to clap after every piece usually they don't allow you to do that okay. like sometimes they're like all right please don't clap after or like please don't clap, clap at all until the very end or clap after the singer has finished their set yeah and did you have how many songs did you do two two mm-hmm. okay which ones did you choose I chose Strido uh, Nolasu from Ipagliacci. Okay. Um, I watched Pagliacci. I don't know what it song was, that was. It's the first song that the female character sings. Okay. The very first thing yes, that yes. she sings. Okay, gotcha. Um, so I sang that. Nice. And then the judges. So then the judges choose from the list that you provide. So you provide mm-hmm. five arias, and then the judges choose from that list what you'll sing next. Okay. And sometimes they have the singer announce from the stage what the judges have chosen yeah. for the audience. So you go out on stage, and there's a big crowd of people, mm-hmm. I'm assuming, and then how many judges are there? Three. Three. Usually there's three, sometimes there's two. Okay. I've seen four as well. Yeah. Are they really serious? Do they joke? Do they smile? Uh, you know. <laughs> I'm just imagining them just, like, really stern. Uh, they, they do smile, um, and they're, I mean, they're usually very serious, but... I think some of the, most of them have a sense of humor. Like I totally yeah. screwed up uh, one of the names of my like when I announced my second piece that they asked me to sing. I was like, "It's ain't it a pretty night from Susanna <laughs> by Floyd." I know yeah. what this is from. I don't know why I'm. And they laughed. Yeah. Audience laughed. I think it's like, I think people get the idea that you can't, that it's so pressurized that you can't like, I don't know, make jokes or make mistakes, yeah. like. People get tongue-tied. Yeah. I've been singing for like 10 years. I know what my stuff is from, but hey, Mm -hmm. nerves, whatever, tongue-tied, just being tired, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but- We're a human being. We're we're human beings. An aria machine. Exactly. (laughs) We're performers that also are humans. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, these particular judges had a pretty good sense of humor. That's cool. And did they, so I'm assuming there are a lot of sopranos in general in the area, because that's yes. the most yeah. common, right? Yes. The most, most common role. So do they cap the number of sopranos that they'll take? I don't know, actually. That's, number of, that's yeah. probably up to the people who take in the applications, but I'm not sure if they actually do that, hmm. because it's definitely a free-for-all for this yeah. thing. So it's, okay. I would assume that it's first come, first serve, gotcha. but they could whittle down the sopranos looking at their resumes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a tough world out there. It is. It is, right? We never really know. How did it feel when you found out like, that you won? How did you find out? Um, so how it's structured is usually people, if they have like 40 applicants, mm-hmm. people are literally singing from like 9 to 5. Yes. There's like a break in between, a lunch break in between, and then it's, then it's over. So once it's all over, once every singer, every singer has sung, mm-hmm. um, the judges then leave to deliberate for about... I don't know, 15, 30 minutes, while everybody, the audience, and all the singers come back and wait. Mm. So once the judges come back, that is when they announce, like, you know, they of course they give their thank yous for everybody, thank you for coming today, mm-hmm. but then ultimately the judges or the coordinator of the event uh, is provided with the names of those who are advancing. It's a day of? It's the day of. Oh my God. I would have yeah. thought you'd have to, you know, wait 15 no. days. Or... It's the day oh of. God. That would be so <laughs> stressful. <laughs> yeah, it's the day of, and it happens at the end of the day. Um, okay. And so they call each name off the list, and then you, you know, go up on the stage or wherever you sang, shake the hands of each judge, yeah. and then, you know, take a bunch of pictures, fill out some paperwork so you can get your money (laughs) and (laughs) check 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 check. (laughs) and then afterwards sometimes the judges most of the time actually the judges provide feedback Mm -hmm. afterwards to every singer oh wow yes usually if they have time yeah so yeah that's it's a long day yeah i can imagine well i can't imagine (laughs) it's a a long day even for the audience because they're sitting there watching a bunch of people sing all day and the judges because they have to you know, choose out mm-hmm. of all of the talent that they've seen that day. Yeah. At least on the bright side, I, I, I'm assuming a lot of the the pieces that are chosen are pretty lengthy, some of them. So cause yeah. I'm just thinking about other com- like competitive things that I've done where mm-hmm. you, you have maybe a minute tops to impress mm, and then true. you're in or out. Yeah. So I'm like, it 
I think that they have enough to work with to be able to make a good, a good yes. decision. Yes. No, I so do agree nice. with that. Usually <laughs> arias are like three, but I think the shortest aria is maybe about three minutes long yeah. tops. Yeah. Still pretty short. Still pretty short, but <laughs> and you're showing a lot in three yeah, minutes definitely. usually. Yeah. And so what were sort of the strategic choices behind the, the songs that you chose for yourself? Um, you know, at this point in my career, I don't know if there's actually a strategy that I have and I'm just putting things on my list that I like mm -hmm. and that I can sing very well. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it's mostly songs and arias that I love to sing and that I feel maybe my strategy is that I can bring a very good drama to mm -hmm. each of the pieces that I sing. Like I know the characters very well, I know the translations very well. So maybe that is the strategy. Do you think that's sort of what set you apart from the other singers? Because you got to hear everybody, right? I didn't get to hear everybody. Oh, okay. my, so my time slot was at 1.07 oh, okay. to sing on stage, and my time to warm up was at 12.40. So they started at 9. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. So like, and, and there were there were some districts where you have to, like, you mm -hmm. have to like come in at the beginning, even if you're like the last person to sing, and stay all day, which is sort of. It makes sense. It makes sense decided. because they don't want you to, I guess, go too far away. But yeah. at the same time, I need to get myself ready and yeah. lined up. So you know, that morning I woke up around nine. Yeah. Had some breakfast. <laughs> chilled What'd out. What'd you have for breakfast? I, this is actually something that's interesting to me. My though. grandma cooked for me, uh, cooked that morning, so I had some salmon cakes, some oh. toast, an orange, and an apple. Oh, so good. Yeah. Any day that starts with salmon, I'm like, this is going to be a good day. So I think for me as a performer, I think what sets me apart from others is that I love to act as well. So mm -hmm. I love to act as almost as much as I love to sing. Maybe actually equally as much as I love to sing. Yeah. And I like to bring that into whatever I'm presenting. Yeah. I like to I do like to embody a character when I sing it, even if it's only for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that that day was what set me apart. Because even some of the judges in their feedback said that I was maybe one of the only only uh performers to bring that mm -hmm. much expression to my performance yeah which I was like oh yay that's great because mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes I think I look stupid when I'm up there because I, I don't I don't practice like all of my movements like maybe I practice the like when I am practicing like the dra dramatic part of my stuff mm -hmm. I don't practice every movement and say I'm going to do this and this line yeah I like it to be natural yeah um and authentic and these judges or are they from Philadelphia no not usually okay so they're, so, from somewhere else. they're from somewhere else. So um, one of them, Melissa Wegner, is actually the runner of this whole mm -hmm. shebang, the okay. whole competition. Um, so she's mostly based in New York. And then there was another guy who was a manager, an artist manager, mm -hmm. Alex Fletcher, who we shared. We shared a birthday. Ah, I found okay. my second birthday to him. Um, and I'm actually not sure where Stephen Osgood. He's a conductor. I'm not sure where he's based, but it's not in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I think he's like with Opera Colorado. No, not Opera Colorado. Maybe Opera, maybe Pittsburgh Opera, mm -hmm. or something. Um, but yeah, so they usually try and get people who are not. Mm -hmm. from the area to come in yeah. especially because you know a lot of people who live in that area do the districts so mm -hmm. I'm sure there were a bunch of people that went to Curtis and American Vocal Academy that applied for this and did it yeah yeah so they don't want to have no conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, all of sense. that all of that. that makes a lot of sense the acting side where mm -hmm. did that come from for you have you been acting your whole life um or you know I would say yes yeah. um I do I did have a knack for acting. I love movies yeah. growing up as a kid. I love movies. I love cartoons. Um, when I started playing video games, one of the first games I played was Final Fantasy VIII oh, in yeah. its entirety. And it's an RPG, so there's a, like, a lot of story, a lot of characters. And in order to make it more interesting for myself while I played, I decided to come up with a voice for each character. Oh, that's so cool. And then speak yeah. like them. So I would say maybe that's where my interest in acting came from because I've always been interested in like what characters sounded like mm -hmm. or you know what type of things they would say like that was a part of their character yeah so yeah I've always just appreciated the art mm -hmm. of acting just pretending to be something that you're not mm -hmm. but still in a way presenting it as yourself yeah 
you know, you yeah, know, that makes you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you could be doing voice acting. If you I would know. love to do voice yeah. acting if this doesn't, you know, work out. Yeah. So. Or a little side hustle. Or even a little side yeah, hustle. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah. When you found out, oh. how did you, this is like the dumbest question ever, <laughs> but just like, how did you feel? What were you thinking? Like, so when it's hard not to like especially after the end of the day so I knew I I felt that I sang very well except for my second piece which I cried on at the Mm. very end just because of like how I got really into the character and the message of that particular piece is that you know, you're, she's from a small town and like desires to leave the town, but she'll always come back. And it was just sort of like a full circle moment for me being mm-hmm. in Philadelphia because I left and then came back and like was doing what I wanted. Yeah. So, and then I saw my mom about to cry. So yeah. like, I just like- Oh, once, you're, once a mom <sighs> starts, it's just like we're done. Yeah, so like yeah. the last page of that sounded horrible to me because I was trying not to cry the yeah. whole time. But like I ended up you know, was getting choked up, tears and everything, so I thought it sounded so shitty. Yeah. But apparently it was fine. Um, so I I thought that perhaps I like went a little too far with the dramatics yeah. and thought that maybe they wouldn't advance me because I got too emotional or... Yeah. But the judges didn't even notice. Like, I mean, they noticed like when I was walking down that I had tears streaming down my face, but yeah. they, it didn't affect my singing or anything at all. Yeah. People how, usually, how, yeah. Sorry, how far away are they usually from you? Um, they're usually at the very back of okay. the room. Yeah. very back of the room so like the stage is here and they're like probably closer to the door gotcha. so okay. they can slip out yeah um so yeah when when we were waiting <laughs> you know I was quiet like I was I was trying to like you know still interact with my friends and stuff but yeah. like it was still on my mind I'm like okay well shit what's gonna happen this is like the third time I'm doing this yeah um what's and you still had happen? hours to wait yeah to... yeah so after after I sang actually we went out to lunch oh good <laughs> yeah 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 so that that definitely helped with like keeping the pressure off yeah because it's like you know what if I if I advance I advance if not hey I still had time to hang out with my buddies and my mom yeah so definitely yay um so yeah waiting was a little nerve-wracking but mm-hmm. you know I've done this is like my third time doing this so I just I don't know I didn't care that much. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like I did really well, and, like, I really hoped that they would advance me. Yeah. Um, to give me one more shot at the regionals and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then when they called my name, I was a little surprised, but also, like, relieved because it confirmed, I don't know, that I, I can tell when, I'm, when I do well. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's good to have an ear for your own work, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it, like if you if you were to get all the way to the end, mm-hmm. like what does that mean for a career? For I guess particularly for yeah. a soprano career, I don't know. Might as well narrow. It's it for down. everybody's career essentially, yeah. but you know it could mean that maybe more people will notice me. Maybe I'll get more work, mm-hmm. like solo work or freelance work. Yeah. Um, maybe it'll mean I'll just you know have my name listed in the group of winners for the rest also of my life great. which yeah. is great, <laughs> great uh, <laughs> yeah. but I think a lot of people think that this competition is like this end all be all end all be all so like once they win they're going to be super famous yeah. when that's just not, not true mm-hmm. it's not true so I I don't know if I get to the very end I think I'd be very thankful for it but I wouldn't be I wouldn't expect mm-hmm like my career to just shoot off okay. like I, I, I'd expect it to help a little bit yeah. because then more people would be able to hear me yeah. and like recognize you know my talent but I don't know I just want to sing for people and like connect with different people Yeah. and you know I finally got to connect with some people in Philadelphia I'm going to connect with some people in DC mm-hmm. maybe, I'll, maybe I'll connect with people in New York I don't think I've actually sung anything operatic except for auditions in New York either so mm-hmm. that'd be cool that would be cool that'd be great yeah, <laughs> yeah. and my uh my soon-to-be sister-in-law lives in New York so she'd be able to see that's that fun. too so yeah yeah awesome well I guess I'll end on a goofy question yes. essentially goofy depending on your goofy. answer um, I was just wondering if you had any weird preparation things that you do like whether that could be like right before or even just like 
in the in the chunk of time before mm-hmm. before you are going to audition for something or perform like do you have anything weird or quirky that you do mm, let's see I do um so after I you know practice and get my voice settled and stuff I do like tend to just walk around in my heels and like mouth mouth all of the <laughs> mouth and like act out facially and maybe physically all of the words of my arias or like yeah. one aria that I'm not particularly secure on or that I think they may ask for I do do that so that may look a little yeah. weird to people when I'm doing it in public Definitely. <laughs> like... awesome thank you for talking to me of course you're welcome. Cool. I've learned so much it's my pleasure